Hello, I'm Mike Kreider, principal at Southwestern Randolph Middle School, and these are some summer thoughts um, that I wanted to provide to you. Uh, we've had some time to relax, hopefully recharge a little bit, um, and I know that there's a lot of um, questions about how school will look and function uh, as we move into the 21-22 school year. Uh, what I can tell you is that uh, it's a very important opening uh, for all students and for all staff members. Um, if you recall, this will be the first time that all of our students have been in person um, for five days a week uh, since March 13th, 2020, uh, which by the time August 23rd rolls around, that will be roughly 18 months that has occurred since we have last had all of our students in school for five days a week. So while we'll get to specifics a little bit later, um, in a couple weeks, um, I did want to talk about some philosophies as far as how we want to envision school functioning in the near future. So my summer thoughts revolve around a thought called normalizing the return. The United States went through some very tumultuous times uh, in the decade between 1910 and 1920. Reformative efforts were being made in a wide variety of areas of life which were sorely needed uh, for civil rights and for labor standards. These movements ranged from improving conditions in the meatpacking industry uh, to fighting for women's suffrage. In tandem with these progressive movements, in 1914, much of Europe uh, entered what we refer to as World War I. The United States, under the presidency of Woodrow Wilson, maintained strong efforts to stay out of the war until it became increasingly clear that neutrality was no longer an option. By January of 1917, the United States was faced with dealing with a war in Europe and also tackling domestic issues that continued to come to the forefront as a society adjusted to functioning in a wartime economy. If that wasn't enough to make it stressful, uh, a flu pandemic gripped our society in 1918. So the United States was relatively lucky in terms of World War I because the war ended merely 18 months after the U.S. joined. Of course, we now considerably know more about the Spanish flu, uh, which claimed the lives of anywhere between 100 to 200,000 Americans um, after all was said and done. Between progressive movements, involvement in foreign wars, as well as a pandemic, people craved a sense of normal. So in 1920, there was a presidential election and campaign, and Warren G. Harding ran his presidential campaign on the slogan, Return to Normalcy, and subsequently won the election. Now, while history tends to view President Harding as having less than desirable character qualities and corrupt buddies that ended up becoming cabinet members, his slogan finds its way into history textbooks and documentaries without fail. I want to examine that idea though, return to normalcy. Because truth be told, all we've heard people say across the globe throughout the span of the COVID-19 pandemic is that they long for a return to normal. The thought persists among so many people that the present moment is still a far cry from what they remember to be different time under less health-related restrictions. Uh, it perpetuates the notion that as of right now, uh, the circumstances we currently exist in are abnormal. However, continuing to view current circumstances as abnormal has two glaring issues with it in my humble opinion. The first of those is that it fosters the idea that human beings are unable to move forward with different life or societal circumstances. This in turn means that human beings are largely resigned to constantly living in the temporary and therefore less able to build on a foundation in their own lives that feels solid. This idea not only disallows younger generations to imagine a brighter future, it causes older generations to cling to ideas and mindsets that are not applicable to current circumstances and robs us of our ability to adapt. We reject the idea that a better can result from current problems and instead stake our hopes to a time in our lives in the past that we are comfortable with. Now the second glaring issue with this, it's physically taxing, emotionally draining, and mentally exhausting to live in this mindset for an extended period of time. This is because the human body 
the human mind, and the human spirit are not meant to live in this mentality for long periods of time. It's intended for short durations when personal or societal circumstances throw a massive curveball at one, doing their best in the game of life, uh, which subsequently requires them to adapt and adjust. Long periods of living in a temporary holding pattern, so to speak, can have dire consequences on one's physical and mental health, as evidenced by the increase of society's dependence on alcohol, opioids, and antidepressants, not to mention increases in gun violence, suicide rates, and diagnoses of depression. It has not been a secret that educators have been pushed in ways never imagined in order to conduct school operations under pandemic restrictions while somehow maintaining pre-pandemic expectations for student learning and achievement. It would make perfect sense for many educators to fall into the category of pining for normal times. However, to quote Admiral Akbar in Star Wars Return of the Jedi, it's a trap. Now I have an announcement to make at this point, and many of you probably inherently know this, but you don't want to speak it into existence. However, having lived in this current frenzy for as much time as I have, I'm fine with saying it confidently. Normal isn't coming back. Why? Because normal is what society makes it. It could be normal to assume that new viruses and diseases will occur that at times disrupt society's flow. Before we get too reminiscent of what we used to do without masks before a pandemic, let's also remember that disease and pestilence have wiped out entire populations, generations, and even societies within the scope of human history in various parts of the world. Given what we have just been through, it's perfectly acceptable and even encouraged to have a healthy respect for science and in particular epidemiology. However, it is unhealthy to fear doing things that are part of the essential fabric of human society. Given this notion, school will never be normal again if we are going to judge normal based on pre-pandemic operations. However, that does not have to be a bad thing. My suggestion, therefore, is to move away from the thought that we want to return to normal. Instead, let's think about normalizing the return. Elements of school that were once enjoyed are slowly returning, uh, but along with that comes the ever-expanding flexibility of learning while not physically sitting in a classroom at school. Even though our brick-and-mortar school will not be charged with accounting for this entirely, we will likely be asked to continue maintaining some processes that we used at the height of the COVID restrictions, especially when providing instruction to students that are temporarily unable to attend school for a wide array of reasons. So this does not in any way, shape, or fashion dispute the undisputed fact that students need to be in school and they benefit the most from being around other people in front of their teachers. If we have learned nothing about children and family life, we have verified this fact thousands of times over during the COVID-19 pandemic. What this does, however, is it highlights how school structure may experience improvement from utilizing pieces of what was learned through remote learning and incorporate that with providing students and families with more tools to succeed. It's actually hopeful to think that while current learning gaps may exist and may be experienced by some students, and that was due to school closures, future learning gaps could potentially be avoided in some cases because of what we learned to do in the recent past because of abnormal circumstances. So instead of longing for a return to normal, our school community stands to benefit from normalizing a return to school and an understanding that while things may happen that alter operations, our focus will continue to be adapting what we do to benefit students in every way possible. Normal does not have to be equated with where students report when they enter the school building in the morning. Instead, it should be understood as normal that educators will always make every effort to positively impact students each and every day they are enrolled in our classes. So to sum up everything, a return to normal would mean that we have learned nothing and that we are not going to use anything from remote instruction. Normalizing a return to school simply means that schools can adapt to provide instruction for students. We are looking forward to a wonderful 21-22 school year. We will have more specifics about uh, particular operations and procedures and things of that nature uh, as we continue through the summer. 
Uh, we will send out information about open house as soon as we verify which times we are going to hold that. Um, but we are desperately looking forward to a time when we have all of our students in the building for five days a week. And we are very hopeful for that return on August 23rd. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.